Around the Table with Vicki. Just like gathering around the dinner table with loved ones and friends, we're here to share stories, insight, and inspiration. Well, Mom, we're excited because we have we have a guest with us. And we I know do. on the first show, we talked about bringing in impactful uh, community members mm-hmm. and wanting to highlight them. Mm-hmm. And I know Jordan and you have a strong relationship throughout the years. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to have her on the show and talk about her new women's ministry and talk about some of the fun upcoming events that they may be having but without further ado, I'm going to introduce Jordan Ayers, the founder of Renewed Women, and I'll allow you, Mom, to get into her story oh, a little good, bit. Good, good, good. Welcome, Jordan. Thank We've you for talked a me. lot about this day and being here together, and so it's finally here. It and I want to give you every opportunity to tell our listeners about your ministry. But before we get started into that, um, just tell us a little bit about Jordan. Uh, let's see. Well, I was born and raised in Amherst, Virginia, just, you know, not too far from here, small town. And we, and actually, no, we, we have to do this for your dad. <laughs> okay. We have to do this for your dad. Your dad is Sheriff Jimmy Ayers. <laughs> he is. And you can't get away from that. I can't. You cannot. And he actually worked for Runkin Pratt for almost seven years. We thought he was retired, but he, <laughs> he evidently was just pulling our leg in that. Um, so we share a common love for, for your dad there. Yes, yes, yes. we do. Um, so, yeah, I grew up in Amherst, and my dad is a sheriff out there. So been I grew up in the community being super involved and found myself uh ending up in a career of fire and EMS and worked in Amherst. I still work there part-time and uh, full-time. I'm a firefighter paramedic in Campbell County. Yay, Um, Campbell County. Yeah. (laughs) Love my job. Um, It's great. Uh, One of the coolest parts of my life right now and while we're here is um, my ministry. That's right. (laughs) Which is, uh, well, the Lord's ministry that he's blessed me to lead, I guess. And um, it's called Renewed Women. Um, it started as just renewed, um, and that is still a thing. I don't think I'll ever get rid of that. As long as I live, it's the coolest part. Um, it started as a little life group, and we met in my house um, for the first time November 16th of last year. Um, and when we first met, it was four people. And I was like, well, this is good. Like, four people, I'm all comfortable. <laughs> this is nice. And um, it all came about because... My sister-in-law um, asked me if I would ever host like a little life group because my best friend and I had started a little Bible study and it was just us two. We'd meet like every week and we were working through a, a Bible study together. And my sister-in-law was like, I really would love like a little community of people. And she's like, I think that one of the driving factors was that my house was like central mm-hmm. <laughs> to everyone. Like, I don't know. Everybody that... go hop into Jordan's yeah, today. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, not that far from Lynchburg and um, not far from Amherst and right in Madison Heights. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll open my house and have a little life group. I was like, we're just going to try it and see what happens. And so I started thinking on it and like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make this great? And very quickly, the Lord made it clear to me that it was nothing I was going to do. And it was going to be how he was going to work through me. And so um, I remember one day I was thinking about this group and when it was going to start and when I was going to have the first one and all those things. And I was like, I need a name for this because if I'm going to make a Facebook group, (laughs) I need to have a name for the Facebook group. And I was sitting um, in a car dealership, getting that old change on my car, doing some writing. And I had just finished working through the book of Romans. And I absolutely adore that book in the Bible, um, as well as many others. But Romans kind of defined um, last year for me. And, a period of life yeah, that you've been through and you shared with me. Right. Um, yeah. You know, the, the reason this all took place is because you're now on the other side of a story. I am. I had just walked through um, a failed marriage at 23 that ended in divorce. And, you know, when you walk through something like that, regardless of if at the time you think that there's anything to it, or you just go through the motions of like checking the boxes, you know, making sure this is final and that's final. You don't realize why you're in it how much it is on you right mm-hmm. like it's draining and so I everything had been final with my divorce and stuff and 
I was filling holes in my life with everything but what I should have. And growing up in a Christian home, and I graduated from a Christian school, I'd have been exposed to the Lord in all areas of my life. Um, and so I was like, you know, God's there. He's there. You know, it's fine. And then I found myself the end of August that I was, I was there. I was at the lowest part of my life. And, you know, the friend groups and the going out and doing this and that wasn't, wasn't doing anything for me. But at the end of the day, feeling like more empty than I was before, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was the end of August and it was a Saturday night. I'll, it'll forever be a marker in my life. I was up most of the night just wrestling with my thoughts. And it was almost like, you know, the enemy's pulling you this way with your thoughts and God was there. And all I had to do was just turn to him, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I woke up the next morning, and I was like, man, I'm really tired. I'm not going to go to church, but I did. And I walked in church just feeling real empty. And the sermon was on um, a portion of 1 Peter, and it talked about where's your joy come from. And it was that moment I realized that if my joy didn't come from the Lord, I was always going to be left feeling more empty than before. So from that moment on, it was just kind of like, it was just me and God, you know, friends had come and gone and, you know, this friend you group. You had even and, discussed with me that you had to get a whole new friend group after this. Literally, it's kind yes. of what it felt like was God just in a way like pruned away a, a big portion of like the people in my life, which is fine because, you know, the more you read scripture, you find that like pruning isn't punishment, right? It's <laughs> preparing you. Yeah. It's preparing you for where God's going to take you. Mm-hmm. And so for a couple months there, I was like, all right, God, like it's a lot, like it's just you and I. And so then my sister-in-law asked me about this life group. And so all this stuff led up and I'm literally sitting in a um, car dealership getting my oil changed. And I was like, all right, I just finished the book of Romans. I've always loved it. And I was like, I need a name for this little group so I can start a Facebook group and invite my friends because That was like the easiest way to put the dates for our meetings on there, you know? Sure. And um, I remember I came um, to Romans 12 too, and it was just so clear to me that that's that's what it was supposed to be. That's what God wanted it to be. And that verse is, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern the will of God, that by testing you may discern the will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. And I stopped at that verse, and I was like, by testing. Mm-hmm. by testing mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. you discern the will of God and God had led me right there through all the testing and all of the trials and the questioning and the wondering why there I was and I was like that's it renewed you know it has to be a thing and so I made a graphic on my little iPad real quick and I was like all right let me start this group and I titled it renewed made the color um, green if anybody's followed my social media you'll see that there's green and because green is the color of new growth. That's right. And, and so I was like, new growth, renewal, it all goes. New opportunity. Yeah, right? A new like, day. Yeah. God just laid it right there. And so I continued to like dive into Romans 12 more than I had before. And just before Romans 12 too, um, we're called to present ourselves a living sacrifice. And it was like, I had this feeling of like, all God wants is me, you know? Mm-hmm. That's our worship to the Mm -hmm. Lord is just ourselves for whatever he wants, you know, ourselves and our obedience is all like, that's all God needs, you know? And so if you continue to read in Romans 12, it talks about gifts of grace. And I was like using your gifts and for the glory of God and everyone has a gift. You know, God doesn't ever place anybody on this earth without a gift or without a purpose. And, um, there's 21 verses in this, uh, chapter of Romans and every single one of them is incredible. And, Another one of my favorites is Romans 12, 12, which says, be patient in hope, joyful in tribulation, and faithful in prayer. And so I took Romans 12, 2, made the life group founded kind of on that. And it was by being patient in hope and joyful in tribulation and faithful in prayer that God's led me to where I'm at. And so I just kind of stuck to that and was like, all right, God, whatever you desire, that's what I'm going to do. And so the first meeting was, I think, four of us in my house. And I remember I write, I uh, have a prayer journal and I write every single day, which is like one of my favorite things to do, because if you don't write down what Mm -hmm. you ask the Lord for, 
you're quick to think he doesn't answer your prayers, right? Because we focus on the big ones and not the little ones that That's we right. ask every day, you know? And I remember riding, I was like, God, whatever you want to do, do it. I was like, night one, we only had four people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, only four can turn into who knows how many, right? Like, uh, who am I to put a number on something? And, and I'm, I'm right in saying that so many of those women were ministering to you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was so cool. I think that, like, after the first night, I remember we, I read through the um, chapter of Romans 12 and just kind of like, hey, guys, like, thanks for coming. This is what it's mm -hmm. about. And I remember that night I said, I've always had a dream of, like, a ministry and I don't know what it is. And I remember telling him, I was like, but I know the Lord will provide because where he takes us, he provides, right? He does mm -hmm. never, where he guides, he provides. We hear that all the time. And so I was, you know, talking to these women and stuff and a bunch of conversations started. I think the first night we were there like two and a half hours between four women in one room. We were there for uh, two and a half hours. Wow. <laughs> was like, That's a lot of yeah. talking. <laughs> yeah. But oh, women, women in a room can do oh, that. You're right. Absolutely. Right? And that night I went to bed and I was like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. You know, like, I think when you're used by the Lord, it's never that like you're pouring out without being poured into, right? Like God is never going to leave you feeling empty. Mm -hmm. and, and every one of those women ended up having a story that would directly impact your life to want to take this further. So let's right. talk about how that happened. Yeah. So it was kind of like the end of November, I think. I can't even remember the date. And it might have even been before Life Group. I'm not sure. But one of my best friends and I went to a little worship night that was hosted in Lynchburg. And I walked out of there, and I remember so vividly, I sat down and I said, that's what church should be like. Oh. And she was like, you're right. And I was like, I, wanna, I want Life Group to turn into that. I was like, not necessarily like form a church. I was like, but that, that's church, right? Like, that's the body of Christ, just like coming together, like people from all walks of life and various stages of life. Some are in the happiest times and some in the worst. And mm -hmm. I was like, that's it. Like, I want life group to be like that. And um, she was like, okay. And she's reminded me of that several times in this walk. And so I guess it was the end of last year. I was like, oh, worship night. I came back to this thought and I was like, we got to do it. So you felt like for sure that God was calling yeah, you to do more 100%, with this. Yes. 100%. Well, I think it's important also to touch on the fact of you, you referenced, you start with four women. Yeah. And then those four women grew to maybe 40 women. And before you knew it, you were meeting in your house and they've outgrown your house and there's yeah. not enough space. And they started meeting outside, which now leads into you having your own conference yeah. at Bella Vista. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I started with the Facebook group was like four people and now it's like 40 or whatever mm -hmm. and people are in my house and sitting down and all this stuff. And so one night, the end of uh, one of the nights we met, I think it was in December, I was like, guys, we're going to do this worship night. I was like, but well, we're going to do it in a little studio <laughs> downtown. <laughs> and I was like, we can have like 40 people, you know, if everybody in the Facebook group comes, we'll fill it, you know? Yeah. And I was like, and we'll have some worship, like I'll find somebody to play the piano and I used to sing on a worship team, mm -hmm. and I was like, so I got that covered. Like, it's fine. And then it was like I just kept coming back to, like, Jordan, you're putting God in a box, right? And I went to my sister-in-law, and I told her, I was like, I feel like I'm putting God in a box. And she said, what are you talking about? And I said, the worship night. I was like, I booked the studio downtown with the max seating of, like, 40-ish people. And I was like, but I just keep coming to the point of, like, I can't get any further. And it's, I was like, I think I need to just, like, make it bigger. And she's like, well, what are you, how are you going to do that? And I was like, I don't know yet. But I was like, you remember I told you that, like, we're God guides. He provides, you know. And um, she said, okay. And I was like, and also, if we're going to have all these women, I need another speaker. <laughs> like, because I can say what I say and read some of the things I've written or whatever, you know, whatever God lays in my heart, I can say it. And I was like, but I need a minister to like all women, right? Like I just, I need to broaden the horizons. And she said, what about Vicki? And I was like, what about Vicki? <laughs> <laughs> she'll do it. I know she'll do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what brought me um, to meet with you. And um, 
I'm and we had a two-hour conversation. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, yeah. Which you know ended up being just really a uniting of the minds, soul, and spirit. Yeah. That God had been working in my life at the <laughs> same time He's been working in yours mm-hmm. to um, be able to minister to women that are hurting. You know, I see so many with dealing with families and dealing yeah. with staff, and I see so many hurting women, and they're really just trying to work really hard. Right. They're trying to be a good wife and a good mother. And some of them are trying to be a good daughter to their senior citizen parents, mm-hmm. which is what we do. Um, and I watch all of that. And we try to juggle so many things right. as us women do. We're guilty of that. And just to have that source of strength, the source of a night that we can all come together. Community. And community mm-hmm. and feel loved and appreciated and praised the Lord, our God for all that he's put us through and, and continues to do in our lives. Um, and so we were able to create a United front here Mm -hmm. that we say, we're going to make this happen on June the 8th, um, at seven o'clock renewed women dot online. If you want to know more about it, uh, tickets are free. Where can they go for that? Yeah. So you can go to the website and tickets are you have to get a ticket. It's listener gathering mm-hmm. tab on the website, um, but they are free. It's just so that, you know, we have a number of people right. um, make sure we have seats for everyone. And we um, want to make sure that everybody, all of our listeners and viewers understand that this is for women of all ages. Right. Um, you're going to have a praise and worship team. We're going to be able to have um, a, some a little desserts and just time yeah. that we can mingle and talk um, and that you don't have to dress a certain way or look a certain way. Yeah. We want everyone to feel like they can come through those doors and feel loved and welcomed. Um, talk a little bit of what the Lord is doing in your life right now with being able to look into the future and write some inspiration and some devotional books that the Lord is currently working with you on that as well. Yeah. Um, when I was in a place where it was just God and I, um, you get to you get to that point, and then suddenly God's all you want. And I've always been somebody who enjoys writing. In school, uh, English was probably the only subject that <laughs> my parents didn't have to like hold me down to study. <laughs> I was English was just like one of my favorite things, mm-hmm. and you know we'd get assigned paper to write, and it was like the greatest thing ever. I'd have it written in like the first night. And um, <laughs> anyways. I've just always loved writing. And I remember as a kid, I would have like composition notebooks and I would write like poetry or I'd write just like a story, a short story or something. And I wish I could go back and find those, but Mm -hmm. I think they've probably long gone Mm -hmm. by now. And so I knew I always just loved writing. And when I was in that place in my life where it was, you know, God had just kind of, I wouldn't say isolation because it's never isolation Mm -hmm. when you're with God. He's put you in quarantine for a little while. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's it's been, it's so freeing and it's so, it's just so enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, so it's like, you just need to write Jordan. And so I just started writing and stuff. And I was like, wouldn't it be so cool to, you know, publish like a little devotional book. I don't know what will come after a devotion. Mm-hmm. I haven't gotten that far yeah, yet, yeah. but that's kind of what I write. Yeah. It's just devotions and I'll send them to friends or whatever. I'm like, what do you like? You know, I hope that you find this encouraging. And people were like, Jordan, you really, you should, you know, you should publish a book. Mm-hmm. And so I have been working on that. Mm-hmm. I don't know when it will come. Right. Um, but the Lord's you know, opening up some doors is, there. So we'll is. pray that that continues. Yeah. So a lot of your writing, you also pull over to your to your Instagram. Yeah. And all those graphics, mm-hmm. they're beautifully so done. So please go to all of our social media and check it out. Um and again, you know, please join us. I'll be there. I'm going to say a few words yeah, and I'm, I'm excited, so excited. Yeah. to be able to share a little bit about my journey, my faith journey with so many. And hopefully you guys will find it encouraging and something that you can use in your own life. Um, right. I'm Everybody's really big. Story. Everybody has a story. I'm really big on um, just really being able to to give God praise for what all that's happened in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, life is not easy. It's hard. It's not. <laughs> And as women, if we can all group together and pray for one another in a in a room that you don't, it doesn't matter what your what your affiliation is with church. We can all still come together that mm-hmm. night and and feel loved and wanted. And that's what this is all about. So again, we just encourage all of you all to come out that night. We're excited to host it at Bella Vista Hotel, and we're excited to see what God's going to do here. Right. 
and information can be found on renewedwomen.online, correct? Yeah, renewedwomen.online under um, the gathering tab. Um, but mom, as always, I know you like to end the show with a quote, and I know you picked one specifically for today. I did. I picked one for Jordan and our, our story here that we're talking about today. And I hope so many of the listeners that, that are listening to this today understand that um, you, you, you do have a story. And you have the choice in your life to what you're going to do with that. And so let's let's use it for good. This is written by Dr. Thelma Bryant. One chapter doesn't have to ruin your story. Turn the page. You're worthy of a plot twist. Don't count yourself out. But mom, following up with community, impactful community members, uh, we have we have one I know an incredible woman with us here today. I know you've been watching her journey throughout the years, so I'm actually going to kick it over to you to introduce her. Yes, we got a great young lady with us today, Taylor Musgrave Perkins. She is the founder of Cravables, and I'm going to let you use your time today to tell our audience exactly what you're doing, what the Lord's put you right in the middle of, and then we'll follow up with a few questions at the end. Okay, yeah. Thank you guys so much for having yeah. me and giving me. This opportunity to share um, this organization is so close to my heart. And um, so it's called Cravables, and we are a nonprofit. And right now we are both a mobile ice cream trailer and shortly going to have um, a storefront Yay! opening in June. Yes, wow. long time coming. Yes. Um, but essentially our mission is to teach job skills and employ those with intellectual disabilities. And that's through supported employment opportunities. Um, so what that looks like is... Individuals that have cognitive and intellectual disabilities, um, it's really hard for them to sometimes get hired uh, by employers that can't meet some of their needs. Um, and I saw this firsthand as a special education teacher in the adaptive curriculum. And out at different employments, uh, they are able to do so many things. However, sometimes they do need those extra supports, and that's where our support staff comes in. And um, our support staff is a variety of different support staff, whether we're special education teachers. We've been paraprofessionals in the classroom. We've worked at a day support um, and then also uh, future professionals. So mm -hmm. those that want to go into the special education field or work with those with disabilities. Um, and as a teacher of seven years, I've grown to love my students. They've become families. Um, and I just saw the barriers that they really faced after high school. They've worked their whole life to learn these job skills. And a lot of them aren't going to go off to college and aren't going to go into trade school and do the things that maybe a lot of the students in their uh, in their grade will do. So we were like, after high school, what is the next opportunity for them? And I watched your material when you sent me some material on your, your organization. And one of the things that I took from that, several things stood out. But one of the things you said in your interview was that these are able students. These exactly. are abled inter individuals and we as a community just need to see them differently. And that's why I wanted to have you on today is that I want to encourage our community to rally around what you're doing, to get involved not only with financial donations, which you're going to need, and I know you're going to talk about that, but the support of the ice cream store as well, mm -hmm. uh, to stop in. I mean, my goodness, we could be asking them to do worse, right? We just yeah. want them to go get some Come ice get some cream. Ice cream. Yes. Yeah, some Homestead Creamery yeah. ice cream, which is so good. But yes, exactly. A lot of times um, people refer to them as their disability. What disability do they have? You know, parents are always having to fill out paperwork focusing on their disability. They're put in school classes because of their disability. And so, yeah, they might have one label as a disability, but they have thousands of abilities. They just need the right platform to showcase those abilities. And that's that's what Cravables is for. Absolutely. Well, I know you have brought your class over to our Pearls of Life yeah. facility, and we have the sensory rooms there. Why don't you share a little bit about your experience with coming to a Runkin' Pratt facility with your students? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So we go on what's called a community-based instruction trip. Um, we try once or twice a month. And, you know, we'll go to the grocery store. We'll go out to different community places. But we were like, we're going to go visit the Pearl of Life, um, and we're going to do some fun Valentine's mm -hmm. Day um, bingo with them. And then uh, we, they have a surprise for us. And so when my students walked into y'all sensory rooms, oh my gosh, it was, mm -hmm. it was incredible. I mean, you would have thought we were floating in a sky in the hot air <laughs> balloon and people were like, whoa, one person was like, is it going to start raining? Cause oh, it felt so real. That. 
And then we got to see the rainforest and the lights that were hanging down. Some of our students <laughs> put it over their hair yep. and pretended that yep. they had long hair. And then one was cuddling with the snake. Yes. And, and it was just, it was amazing. I was like, I wish every store had these. Our mall had them. Every place had a sensory room for everyone. I mean, yes. I enjoyed it. Absolutely. And we, we talk about how that Alzheimer's and dementia is so relatable with those of disabilities such mm -hmm. as autism and the ability to kind of reason things out. It calms them and it, it creates a place to where we touch all the senses. Yeah. And so I love that you brought them over and we want you to know that you're welcome at any time. But Thank for the you. community, what can we do for you? Where can they send donations? Where can they find out more about you? Yeah, so we have a website, craveables.org, and we also have an Instagram and Facebook that we update where we're going to be. Um, but uh, we asked that the community books our ice cream trailer to come out for events. We've done about uh, seven so far, and we have about 14 coming up just in the next <laughs> few weeks and months. Um, so just getting us out in the community in different places to serve not only ice cream, but to serve the hearts um, of our employees and the customers. And then along with that, um, because we, we are a nonprofit because... A, a typical ice cream shop would have two or three employees. Mm -hmm. We want to employ as many as possible, mm -hmm. plus the support staff for them. Mm -hmm. So it's a very expensive um, organization or, I guess, business plan. Um, and so we ask for donations, corporate sponsorships, um, and all of that can be done online as well at Cravables.org. So I want all of the people listening today to get behind Taylor, let her know how much we love her and how much we appreciate a young lady of your age seeing a need seeing people that just really need to be elevated to a space that we can see them as able. Yes. Instead, I love that when I heard that. That's such a great story because we tend to put people like that into a box and they don't need that. We need to elevate them to where they can do things they're able to do. So I applaud you as a young businesswoman you. from one woman to another. Our stories are a bit similar, and that resonated to me when I heard all of your material come through and watched it. I want you to know that you've blessed me. That and because so of that, Around the Table with Vicki and Runcom Pratt Communities would like to donate $1,000 to Cravables. So Thank I want you, so you to, to take that with you. Thank you, guys. That's um, so incredible. And we plan to stop by and do Please lots do. of Please visits. Do. I want to get to know those kids. and <gasps> They're amazing. And just really um, get involved with what you're doing. And I encourage all the other businesses that are listening to me that are my friends and that follow what we do. Let's let's help Taylor get started here and let's get her kicked off to nothing but success. And for those kids, let's bring our smiles and support into their ice cream shop. What kind of goodies are you going to be serving? So our trailer is um, ice cream, cups and cones. But in store, we're going to have different floats. We'll have dessert nachos. Huh? Um, yes, we'll Ooh. have some cookies sandwiches I'm some ready to go right now. Oh, it's it's so good i'm so excited i'm like I, I gotta not eat too much of it every day but maybe just a little here and there but um no our and we say uh, our slogan is full bellies fuller hearts because customers will come in and they're going to get their delicious ice cream and their their goodies and you'll have a full belly but you will have an even fuller heart Absolutely. because you know that you have just given the opportunity for them to have a job and, and help change their lives. Yes. And all the parents that are involved, listen, you have such a great leader here with Taylor. We support you guys. I heard some of the stories of the families just can't, I hope you're going to have a grand opening June and 8th. we would like to be there and support June 8th. June 8th. June 8th. Yes. June 8th. Make sure you come yes. out. June 8th. Yes. All right. We'd love for y'all to be there. Taylor, I, do you have some? I do. So um, our employees also sell, um, bracelets and you can order t-shirts online and different merchandise but this works on some job skills and fine motor skills so i brought some bracelets um you can totally pick you can have all three oh, of them I'm so excited. but i will say our theme song i don't know if you've heard it by mercy me is say i won't um mm -hmm. and, it, and it says not enough is what i've been told um but uh, there's a spirit inside me that says I'm so much more and it so says through Christ I can do all things and it says watch me and say I won't do this oh, because they've that. been told they can't but we we're going to show how able and how can and how they can absolutely so I'm going to close with a verse that yeah. the Lord laid on my heart this morning as I got up very early to do my devotions and then I was able to look at your things and became overwhelmed with tears not I'm just so proud of you but I'm also proud that you're 
you have the enough enough courage to admit that God led you to this journey. He's the true leader. Um, so in Matthew twenty five forty, it says, "And the King will say, I tell you the truth: when you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it unto me." And the least of these talks about those with disabilities, those that are least lesser than in our community. Mm-hmm. And God says, when we help them, that we're honoring Him, and that's exactly what you're doing. God bless you, Taylor. Thank and you so we're much. gonna be there to eat ice cream. Thank you. Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you guys.